So thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Jamie and uh, Ms. Santos and uh, my friend Lango and your team. I think we are, first of all, we are great partners in this uh, uh, wonderful, uh, you know, effort to promote education in, uh, in the province of Punjab. And uh, uh, this partnership uh, is so unique and so uh, uh, productive that uh, uh, I don't have uh, suitable words to really appreciate uh, this coordination and this partnership between World Bank and other international donors. DFED is uh, a very important uh, player in this game and uh, you know, it's, re it's really wonderful. And uh, uh, to say at the outset that uh, education is critical to uh, any uh, society's well-being and uh, empowerment. So uh, even I could understand its uh, importance in the very early days of my uh, uh, political career and uh, I could uh, see that Pakistan's future in fact lies in quality education and more so promoting technical education, vocational training because uh, in any uh, uh, devel developed country of the world you see that uh, not everybody goes to university. Even in Britain, you see that uh, uh, not all of them go to Cambridge or Oxford or London School of Economics. M many of them uh, take a turn, uh, you know, midway and uh, go towards vocational training, go towards arts and designs, uh, go towards uh, uh, technical training and so on and so forth. So on a similar uh, pattern, I think that we in Pakistan, because of our demographic uh, challenges, our, as I said in my speech, that mm -hmm. our uh, youth uh, bulge is our biggest challenge. Mm -hmm. And we must harness and channelize their energies into productive channels. It's so important. And therefore, A, we have uh, uh, tried our best to increase school enrollment and which is sustainable that's very important sustainable and for that we have taken a lot of measures and in terms of our uh, you know female uh, uh, students the girls we have uh, in south of Punjab we have uh, uh, you know enhanced their uh, monthly stipend mm -hmm from rupees 200 to 1,000 rupees uh, per month from class 6 onwards to ensure their sustainability. Yeah, that they stay in school. Pardon me? That they stay, they stay in, in school. the schools. Yeah. Similarly, uh, uh, we have inducted, as I said earlier on, more than <coughs> 200,000 uh, uh, teachers, 100% uh, merit-based induction. Uh, in this province's or this country's history and they're highly qualified and uh, they are contributing towards uh, you know uh, you know educating our youth our boys and girls but the challenge is that they must begin refresher courses they must be uh, trained you know uh, periodically they uh, they must be uh, they must go through a uh, 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 a litmus test, you know, regularly, so that uh, you know they are, they remain competent, they remain uh, hands-on, and then we, uh, those low-performing schools in this province, thousands of uh, these schools have been handed over to NGOs. The government of Punjab is uh, is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is financing them 100 percent. So it's like uh, handing over to better managers. Uh, I mean, before that, we were providing the funds, we were providing salaries, but uh, the <coughs> the absenteeism level was high, 
schools were not performing well. They were very, very low performing schools. So about, I think, 6,000 schools. Yeah, 4,300 4, schools have already been um, outsourced. And, uh, and with this uh, one, uh, you know, the CN, their enrollment level has, has gone up uh, at least 100% uh, uh, more than the, original, than the earlier enrollment level, which is wonderful. There are teachers, there are students, and there are managers looking after them. And then uh, missing facilities in, in, in schools in Punjab. We have spent billions of rupees, uh, about, I would say, about uh, uh, over the period of time, we have spent about 30 billion rupees providing missing uh, facilities. Now we are building uh, additional classrooms. In, um, and uh, as I speak, in the last uh, two years, about 10,000 classrooms have been built of high quality. Then we have uh, given tablets, 40,000 tablets to schools. Mm -hmm. And this has become uh, a w wonderful interaction. And on, on the, uh, yeah. the presence of teachers and students mm -hmm. can be now verified uh, through those tablets. And now with the Asian Development Bank support, we are uh, going for a huge solarization of schools because where electricity is not available, and, uh, and they're dark, so we are providing uh, solar panels over there. 20,000 schools are being solarized, and uh, the, the project has already started. We have awarded the contracts to the Chinese companies who, are, um, who, who have won these contracts, and uh, soon the shipment will start to take place, and in the next few months, um, thousands of schools will be connected with solar uh, electricity. And uh, then Punjab Education Endowment Fund. This, Mr. Minister, is a unique program. We have, through this program, financed hundreds of thousands of boys and girls in this province and a share uh, to other provinces of Pakistan who come from a very poor background. But they are shining stars. They are, uh, you know, they are very brainy, but uh, they didn't have the resources to uh, get uh, knowledge and uh, this is how this trust of the government of Punjab is providing with knowledge and believe me it's, this program uh, is now nine years old ever since I became uh, chief minister in 2008 um, I launched this pro this was the first program I launched in 2008 and by now uh, about 300,000 students uh, have benefited thousands have become doctors engineers and uh, I think for the rest of uh, the life, this program will continue. Annually, there will be uh, annual addition uh, in, in the seed money. Mm -hmm. And there will be time, 10 years uh, down the line, it will have a billion dollar you know, sort of uh, seed money out of its income. We will uh, you know, finance uh, you know, uh, hundreds and thousands of students every year, which is, now this is a, a game changer. It's a game changer, believe me. And then uh, at the higher level, you know, we are also doing, uh, and you know, we have uh, distributed uh, all, almost 400,000 uh, uh, laptops to shining stars in this province. Mm -hmm. Lap 400,000 laptops. We have uh, chucked out 90,000, you know, children from uh, uh, brick kilns, the child labor. It, that was slavery. Mm -hmm. That was the most damning thing happening in front of our eyes and uh, we would be able to you know you know you know uh, cleanse all these uh, uh, brick kilns and 90000 boys uh, uh, boys young young uh, boys are now in the schools mm -hmm. with the bags we have given stipends monthly stipend and uh, you know uh, in books uniform and look how uh, decent they are looking and uh, they will become you know productive uh, hands of this uh, society in times to come. Uh, unfortunately, if this trend had continued, which it had been in the last seven decades, they would have also become part of muck and dirt uh, of their uh, dusty streets, right. and uh, we would have lost those brain in child. Then these Danish schools. Mm -hmm. Danish schools are 
like uh, eaten in harrows of Pakistan. You know why? But there's one difference. Um, uh, these are it's uh, D A A N I S H Danish school. Danish is an English intellect. It's not Danish schools. Yeah. It's uh, Danish, and uh, there they have sprawling uh, play facilities. They have uh, wonderful dormitories, and they get uh, you know beautiful uh, you know libraries, you know IT libraries, beautiful classrooms, smart boards, and teachers of highest highest standing. Most of them they hail from their uh, their own areas because they feel very proud to. Uh, teach their own, uh, you know, children from you know, sons of the land. So some of them have left their jobs in Islamabad. They have gone back to those remote areas. They have picked up job and they are teaching their uh, boys and girls in, that, in those areas. And these Danish schools, you know, the, the difference between Eton and Harrow and Danish school is that they, you know, admit rich, uh, uh, the same of the richest people. Here they are only from the poorest backgrounds. You know, orphans, double orphans, who have no um, umbrella, uh, you know, in life, no shadow, no nothing. Yeah, and believe me, today they can stand before the audience and make fiery speeches, you know, at the rostrum and explain uh, the meaning of life and explain how they have been treated by these Danish schools, and their own parents, because they have lost their mother and they have lost their father and Danish schools have become their parents and the way they have been groomed up and educated, taught English, everything. This is seeing is believing. And uh, they go and compete outside Pakistan, you know, in, in debating uh, competitions, essay writing. They've been to New York, they've been to other places. And now they are joined universities abroad. So this, these are measures, uh, Mr. Minister and uh, um, Ms. Santos, that this is a game changer in this country. Can we hear you that online on Facebook? I, th I thought it was all on the Facebook, <laughs> wasn't it? Not yet. I think we're not yet live. I think they have recorded it. We are? Okay, okay good. good. Very, Very good, good to listen to you. I hadn't realized that we were already live. live. Okay. So I, I should have started, started by thank you for so gracious, graciously accepting to participate in this conversation. My pleasure. That the World Bank is launching on investing in, uh, in human capital, investing in World Bank is my, my dear friend. <laughs> Very good to and, hear And Elango is a catalyst. <laughs> Very, Very good, good to hear that. that. Uh, we, we can, can see, see how, how, how exciting uh, uh, all the conversation is and how excited and passionate you are about investing in, in, in people and, and all the reforms you've been, you've been uh, moving forward in this country. Um, I was wondering if um, uh, Mr. Salvedra, who is our Director for Education in, uh, in Washington and a previous Minister of Education in Peru, um, would want to give us some ideas as well uh, on the World Bank has launched a World Development Report, which is on education, the, the issue of 2018, and it talks about the learning crisis. So we heard how many reforms are happening and how many good things are moving forward. Do you have any, any ideas to complement this around those reforms? Many of the lines of action that the Chief Minister has, has laid out uh, for the province of, of Punjab in a way reflect many of the challenges that we face globally, right? We globally, in the same way that this province has, 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 has done, there has been an expansion of enrollment, right? I mean, more kids are, are, are in school. Still, we have a challenge, right? Still, there is a, there is still we have too many kids uh, um, still out of school, um, in, uh, particularly in secondary education. We usually see many countries uh, an increase in the dropout rates in secondary, particularly among, among girls. So, for instance, the uh, the stipend to girls that that um, that is happening here, I mean, is a critical intervention in order to make sure that girls and, and boys as well. I mean, everyone that stays at school that they can complete the full the full range of secondary. So, um, so more kids at school still there's a long way to go. But in addition to that, we have the other challenge that is about learning. 
what's happening inside schools, right? And what's the quality, yeah. right, of that learning, yeah. right? And the, the steps that, um, uh, that uh, Punjab is, is making and, uh, and in Pakistan in general, the, of making sure that you have more teachers that are recruited on a merit basis, right? So that we can, um, we can make sure that we attract the best people Right, to, to be teachers, right? And all the investments that are happening in terms of the professional development of teachers is absolutely critical. Because if there's one factor that explains the quality of learning is the teachers that we have, right? So that's absolute, absolutely fundamental. So the steps that are happening here in terms of making sure that we have the best, right, in the schools, it's fundamental. And one thing that we were mentioning before- I didn't know one day you will come and endorse my, my reiteration that one factor which can change, uh, uh, make or break, is the quality of the teacher. Yeah. The battery of people sitting here will vouch for my, uh, you know, the statement I've been making for the last many years, time and again. Yeah. Even at the cost of their irritation, <laughs> that the quality of the teacher, the quality yeah. of the teacher, which will make the difference. Yeah, we were. We and were thank saying, you very much. No, no. You have endorsed this today. Yeah, no, no, that's that, and that's that's critical. And one thing that we were mentioning the uh, in the panel that we were uh, earlier is that all the adults that were that are in a room will always remember by name that teacher that said something that changed their lives. Absolutely. Or will remember the name of that bad teacher Absolutely. also, right? Everyone remembers that. Just the, that's a very simple proof, right, of how important is the role of the teacher in the lives of people. Right, in the lives of children and in the lives of people in, in, in general. And how is that we cannot afford to have a teacher that is not motivated <coughs> and well prepared? God prepared, bless you. Right? Because, because that teacher is in front of a group of kids. Right? So no parent wants to have a teacher that is not well motivated, that is not well prepared. So we cannot afford right, failing in the, case, in the case of teachers. And teachers in that regard, and that applies to Punjab and to the world, uh, they have to e internalize how big is the responsibility that they have, right? So in that regard, if there's one factor, right, that we recognize that it's critical in terms of improving this learning crisis that we see, and we say crisis because the magnitude of the challenge is extremely big, is to work more, much more, right, in terms of developing good careers for teachers. Can the World Bank, on my request, send him on deposition to Lahore? for three years, <laughs> that will change the landscape. Because what he's saying is, is, is something I've been saying for the last nine years, quality of teachers, quality of teachers, teachers training, master trainers, techniques, syllabus, everything. But it's important <coughs> that someone who is in a political position, you are now in a political Such position. I was in the past, not anymore. Now at the, at the, at the World Bank with the, uh, with the honor to be able to see educational systems uh, everywhere. And what one sees that the critical factor in order to implement reforms is that there's political commitment, right? Because sometimes we just have a good design, we think that we know we can do, but very little happens, even if one has good designs, if there's no political commitment for things to happen. Absolutely correct, no doubt. No, without that, nothing will move. Uh, which is the best model, if I ask you, mm -hmm. Mr. Minister, which has transformed quality of education because of quality of teacher? So, I mean, it's very difficult to say there is this country that, uh, that is the model that uh, Punjab should follow, right? Because each country has its own characteristics. But what is true is that if there is one thing that can predict the quality of education is if one sees in a country how much they value socially the teacher's career. There you are. That's the key point. So you see the good educational systems are those in which there is prestige. Not only it's not only been an issue of money, right? It's an issue of prestige. What he's saying right? is that bureaucrats should ensure the respect of teachers if uh, they want uh, our and their children to really, uh, you know, sh to shine out and really excel in life. It's teachers is our training. So you have recently upgraded their. We have upgraded yeah. them. From the Right. Yeah. Again, a very, very, very uh, valuable point you've made. Yeah. yeah so that's a critical of wisdom. issue. Yeah, that's a critical uh, issue. Believe me, this, this is what it is. There's 500 star teachers in the world. So uh, now, and, it's, and one has to recognize also that one, when one has to make a change like this, it's not something that will happen from one day to the other, right? Because everywhere, I mean, when we talk about teachers, 
countries have 300,000, 500,000, a million teachers. Teachers is the largest occupation of, in every country. In Punjab, in Punjab our uh, <coughs> teacher force is bigger than the total force of Pakistan army. Yeah. yeah it's, we it's, have more than yeah. half a million teachers here. Right. So it's, that, that's right. Right. so it's critical to change the mindset of teachers in the sense that they always have to internalize how important is their role and how responsible they are. It's, it's a, as opposed to any other job in which one could say, well, there's a good professional, a fantastic professional, an okay professional. In the case of teachers, that's very different because you cannot have an okay teacher only. Because, I mean, I will be very, very worried if my daughters right, are working with an okay teacher. Right? You want to have an excellent teacher because every parent will be worried about <coughs> who is working with his son or with his daughter. So that's, and, and, and when we see... Fantastic. The, the, Fantastic. When, when looks at the countries that are excelling in education, usually it's a country in which, for instance, entering the teacher's career is very difficult. Right? The filters are very high. I mean, to get into the educational institution, to a pedagogical institute or to a university in order to study education is very hard, right? Finishing is very hard, right? That's usually what, um, what characterizes right, a, a, um, uh, an educational system that is doing well, right? But that actually is a, is a, is a, is a social commitment, right? It's not only an issue of, 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 of the Ministry of Education, is that I mean, as a society, we need to make sure that teachers are really well recognized. Um, uh, Mr. Minister, you have really said all those... Uh, I'm not a minister anymore. You can well, keep on uh, well, <laughs> I, I spend my time as a minister. Yeah. <laughs> you have said all those uh, relevant things which are so critical to uh, our education. And this alone is one powerful factor. If we really you know, uh, come up with the right kind of answers, our teachers will become very inspired and uh, very, uh, you know, enthusiastic and committed, dedicated, and they will go and teach uh, their boys and girls like their own sons and daughters. That should exactly. be the, the, exactly. the level of, uh, the of commitment. commitment. Of exactly. Commitment. And uh, you, are, you are so right. I think uh, saying all this is uh, music to my ear. You have made my day. Yes. I want to really, really urge upon my colleagues Listen, time and tide wait for none. If you want to really the society progressing and uh, really empowered, and our youth becoming uh, uh, truly uh, quality, uh, you know, youth, uh, you know, able to bring change in lifestyle, bring change and make the difference between the past and and, and, and today and tomorrow. It's uh, how they get their education from the teachers. So if you can really grasp the meaning of this uh, discussion. We all, I can tell you, sky is the limit. There are no uh, mm -hmm. shortage of resources. Financial resources is not an issue. We know this very well. And uh, if we can, and mm -hmm. exactly I used to tell them that you have to give teachers a higher level of respect. Right. My fellow bureaucrats, don't worry. You will remain secretaries. You will remain chief secretaries. You will remain additional secretaries. But if you are able to promote teachers, of, uh, of, uh, of material, high quality material, you will not lose your jobs. The minister will not lo lose his job. I think this will be, I think, infinite service and contribution to, uh, the, 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 to the future of this country. And there are children. Jahanzeb Khan, Shabazz Sharif, Captain Zahid, would we want our children to go to a uh, to school which is uh, second to none? No. They would obviously send the school, the children to schools which are second to none. So that's how, if we look through these glasses and these lenses, the landscape will change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mr. Minister, Minister, what about teachers for the fourth industrial revolution? How, how do we get the schools ready? You spoke so much about it at your opening of the HD Forum, of the importance of the youth bulge and being ready for the Industrial Revolution. Yeah. So the teachers are a core feature. Um, what other ideas do you have for, for reform and, and how do you see these moving forward in Punjab? Three things. Uh, one is that we must ensure, difficult as it is, uh, it's a very, very tough nut to crack, that uh, 
we should go flat out to ensure that every child gets admitted in, in schools, whether normal children and specialized, they all get admission in schools. All our girls in the remotest uh, parts of Pakistan, in hilltops, you know, you know, uh, sand dunes, deserts, villages, cities, they all get into schools. And that's why through this voucher scheme, which is again, I think, different than World Bank, I don't know, I think it's a, it's a coalition. Through this voucher scheme, we have uh, empowered the parents that within uh, the, uh, the breaker of that uh, monthly expenditure, they can uh, admit their <coughs> child to any school in their vicinity, uh, in their mohalla, or in their uh, area, area. And that's a, a yet another wonderful addition this uh, voucher scheme and Punjab, it's, it's through Punjab and uh, Education Fund and it's millions of boys and girls have been admitted. So I think the first uh, point to your question is that we must endeavor and, and put in place mechanism uh, and institutional framework in fact because um, I will leave this place one day soon, I don't know, we are all, uh, you know, you know, going to move and to other places. Nobody is going to be there uh, for uh, all times to come. Nobody's permanent. So before we really vacate these uh, uh, places, we should put in place uh, a permanent institutional mechanism that every child in this country is uh, sent to school. This is one we have talked about teachers. We have talked about the quality. Basic skills. And, and, and two, this enrollment must be sustainable because it's not enough to say that we have uh, increased our enrollment. What is important is more important to ensure that this enrollment is, sus is sustained because we are a poor country or a developing country and um, we have a very, very unjust and unfair distribution of resources and, you know, uh, a small uh, percentage of our uh, uh, society can send their children to uh, the west of school in Pakistan and out of Pakistan. A very, very large majority uh, can only have access to ordinary public schools or government schools. And they come from very poor background. Some of them are able to just meet the two and together. Some can't. Some uh, don't have jobs. So important thing is that when we enroll them, enroll them in sustaining fashion. That means uh, providing them with some kind of cash grants, you know, milk, you know, lunch boxes, etc. Then there are uh, there are also issues. Uh, you know, some uh, uh, teachers in the school in remote areas cannot uh, you know afford to be in school all the time unless they have the children with them. So you provide uh, uh, what we call uh, services uh, for the mothers. A parent room or a children room with where the, where the children can come and uh, play with the, you know uh, you know chessboard or you know some other games and uh, the teacher is busy teaching satisfied that his or her daughter is there in the school well looked after so these are uh, extremely important critical measures to ensure um, you know sustainability and then of course is uh, a question of uh, you know their future and we must build their future right uh, you know at the inception that uh, well we keep on you know sort of uh, testing their uh, uh, their capacity you know every you know we have our exams and then uh, through this uh, uh, process of uh, filtration we then recommend that yes you go to the college you go to a technical school you go to a vocational center so that uh, society uh, does not become burden uh, uh, you know, on the society, rather they share the burden of the society through these uh, very important interventions. So I think uh, that's how I would I would like to uh, explain my vision about uh, schooling in this province and of course in this country. Mm -hmm. So, so through a lifelong learning process. process. It is absolutely. Yeah, and the uh, and to complement uh, what the chief minister mentioned is that 
in addition to these basic and fundamental skills right that have to be provided at school and that i mean they have to be there has to be an effective la learning because that's what makes the schooling sustainable in addition to that we have a larger challenge that i mean both those kids who today are in school right they're going to, in the coming years they're going to be confronting a labor market which is this time more uncertain we don't know what's going to be the quality and the nature of the jobs in the future so they need to have those basic fundamental skills but in addition to that they need to have those skills that will allow them to learn permanently right nobody can think of now of, i'm going to study an occupation and with that i'm going to be able to live for the next 50 years that's not going to be the case right they need to have in addition to the basics the ability of of being able to uh, to be creative, critical thinking, problem solving, the discipline to be able to study to study by themselves, to learn by themselves. Um, so that's those are those what sometimes we call non-cognitive or social emotional skills that are each time more important and digital skills. But right? all kids now they have to be computer literate. So the challenge that we have and that, that schools have and the teachers have, right, is each time larger. Right, because now, I mean, what we, the only certain thing is uncertainty. The only certain thing is that jobs are going to be changing in the future. We were saying before uh, with the chief minister, if we, uh, in, 10 years ago, the occupation of app developer didn't exist. Nobody would have understand. It would say, what is an app? What, what is that, right? But today, if my daughters say they want to be an app developer, I would say, it's okay, important. good. That's an interesting occupation to, to, to follow. So 10 years from now, we don't know what will appear, right? And our students today, they have to be prepared for that world. So that implies investing more in, 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 that, in the different aspects of basic education. But then the other point that the chief minister made, the issue of vocational training, or training in general. I mean, there's this idea sometimes that everybody after secondary, they have to go to the university. And that's wrong, right? A university is a path, but technical, technical training is another path. Right, that is mm -hmm. as valid at universities, right? And if one sees the, the, the world of, of the OECD countries, I mean, the, uh, the, 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 the number of, of students who finish secondary and then choose not the university but the technical path, right, is as valid and as large, right, as the university, as the university uh, highway, say. So mm -hmm. those two highways, I mean, are not one of high quality or high prestige and the other low quality, low prestige. There are alternative paths, right? That uh, that people have to value, um, because I mean, a lot of the good job opportunities will be on the technical side. Absolutely. I agree with uh, Mr. Jamin, uh, and there's a social table also which needs to be demolished because in in, in this country, and I'm sure this is uh, the trend um, in other countries as well, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that uh, boys and girls would like to uh, be holders of. Uh, uh, you know, master's degrees and undergrads, and even if it's in art or history or geography, has relevance to any society, but beyond limit, it, uh, it is redundant because it doesn't, uh, um, you know, produce jobs, it doesn't uh, uh, create, uh, uh, you know, production, creativity, uh, knowledge, income, wealth, it doesn't. So I think that taboo has to be. Um, and demolished and uh, there has to be an awareness campaign that look and there's nothing wrong if you don't go to a university and go to a technical institution, you know, college right. institute mm -hmm. where you really get trained and uh, become a carpenter or become a technician go to Dubai or to Abu Dhabi earn twice as you uh, earn here and remit home uh, foreign exchange have a very you know happy life instead of having a master's degree in arts and you don't get a job. So I think that's uh, social, uh, uh, I would say false values have to be addressed to and they will have to be you know, removed right. so that uh, our youth really gets uh, inspired and get convinced that look, this is the way forward, yeah. this is another path. Yeah. And uh, in addition to that, in our schools already, we have uh, started establishing <coughs> technical centers there mm -hmm. so that they start getting technical uh, you know uh, you know training and once they are uh, they finish the school then they know that uh, they're going to university or they're going to a technical right. school yeah so I think this and we are also um, in the process of establishing the first uh, first organized technical university 
uh, here in Lahore, uh, which is going to be the first in Pakistan mm -hmm. next month with Chinese uh, uh, coordination, you know, uh, from the, their um, uh, Tianjin is their uh, the state and Tianjin University is cooperating with us. So that is going to be a paradigm change again. But essentially coming back to the point, it's all about uh, quality education, that means teacher, proficiency. And uh, he was so right that we are simply ignorant of this factor. And uh, we really, it's not that we have, uh, have uh, we have so many millions boys and girls in schools. What is their level mm -hmm. of proficiency? That's so important. And I don't think uh, we are so aware of this uh, critical part of our, um, our efforts. So I think we really need to mm -hmm. um, inculcate this into our, uh, into our overall vision and really move forward. I think sky is the limit. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Chief, Chief Minister, I know your time is precious. One, one final question. question. As, As a woman, woman I, have I have to ask you, you girls education, education. the, the labor force participation of women is very low. low. How do you, do you see, see this moving this forward? <coughs> this, is, uh, this is very uh, uh, important question you have raised and uh, integral to our uh, overall uh, vision because female population is equal to male population in this country. Believe me. And uh, again, uh, you would be, uh, um, I would like to pamper you in a way because um, our female uh, population is ahead of our male population in terms of their uh, academic, uh, uh, mm -hmm. you know, performance. Uh, girls in uh, medical uh, schools are doing way ahead of uh, boys, so in Indian universities and other uh, you know, uh, walks of life. A, B, as I said, it's uh, fifty percent of our population. If we <coughs> sorry, <coughs> if we do not empower them, if we do not educate them, and provide them with uh, with, uh, with, uh, with 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 potential uh, opportunities to become productive hands of the society, then we are actually, you know, not doing our job properly because then we are feeding a stagnant population which is a burden on our uh, on our scarce resources it is um, it is not only unwise it is uh, it is criminal on the part of any society so i think uh, we must encourage uh, our uh, female population to 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 walk hand in glove with the male population in banks in financial institutions in industry in medical centers in education centers and so on to forth. And government of Punjab has really, uh, you know, gone way ahead of other provinces in empowering our uh, uh, female uh, population. Uh, you know, and I can give you, uh, uh, you know, a long list of uh, items which you've done the last eight nine years. For example, all uh, uh, government uh, sector boards will have to be filled by at least 33 percent of female uh, slots. Mm -hmm. This is uh, mandatory, mandatory. Punjab is the only province where we are establishing uh, women, uh, Warrens Again Women Centers, mm -hmm. the only province in Pakistan. And it is properly enacted by, uh, by law passed by the Punjab Assembly. Punjab is the only province where uh, uh, property rights, mm -hmm. you know, title deed will uh, ensure uh, that uh, the, the husband and wife are equal, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, signatories of that title deed. This is again uh, by way of uh, law. Punjab is the only province where we are providing uh, uh, microfinance, small loans to our uh, young female unemployed uh, you know uh, population and they are getting billions of rupees of small loans mm -hmm. getting a, a small uh, beauty parlor you know, barber center small uh, uh, you know uh, art shop you know uh, you know some machines where they are blue pottery pottery work etc and they are and at, as I speak, 1.8 million households in Punjab have benefited from these loans. That means if 1.8 is multiplied by 6, 
because one household averages six um, uh, members of a family. It crosses one million people, uh, sorry, 10 million people in Punjab, which is uh, by itself a very, very you know, w wonderful, valuable service. And then uh, uh, we have uh, <coughs> now uh, a, a Women's Foundation uh, headed by Dr. Vakar. What's his name? No, no, uh, this organization? Pardon me? Commission for Status of Women. Commission for Status of Women. Headed by Dr. Fauzi Vakar, and she has already given uh, consecutive three reports the last three years. And this is again for women uh, emancipation. But there is a problem. Again, that requires uh, this is a, again a social uh, issue, and we need to really address it. Our young daughters, they get uh, <coughs> subsidized. Uh, education. Our young daughters are very, very talented because everything is, uh, is on merit in Punjab, whether admission in, in medical schools, in um, engineering schools, in police, in, 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 in education. Everything is on merit. I mean, even I can't, uh, you know, recommend any person at all. I've never done it. And uh, you'd be probably surprised, but this is a fact, Mr. Minister, that there's no safarish here, no recommendation. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. all on merit. At somewhere down the line, at function level, somebody has uh, done a wrong thing. Mm -hmm. He is taken to task and hold and held to account mm -hmm. very, very properly. So coming back to the point, the problem is that our uh, young daughters get um, medical education. They become doctors. They become engineers. And then they get married and they sit at home. Yeah. So the investment on them by the nation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. through... Uh, uh, you know, uh, our scarce resources is not uh, utilized uh, you know, properly mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, that's a very big challenge mm -hmm. we face but in cities uh, uh, female population in the rural areas are far more productive because even though they are uh, not educated they are uh, semi-literate or even li illiterate they work with their husbands over there in the fields Sorry, but don't mind it because I'm, I'm, these are the facts. Uh, they work with the husbands in the field, and the brothers and, and sisters in the field, plow the land, uh, bring fodder to the cattle, and you know, remove uh, you know, uh, uh, particles from the field, and you know, throw seed. They are far more productive than women in, in cities. So that is an issue, and we have to address this issue yeah. holistically. Otherwise, uh, believe me, the uh, the opportunities uh, for our uh, female population to progress in the society, you know, are uh, are infinite, and unlimited. We had uh, the, the first female, uh, you know, pr prime minister in Pakistan, late Benazir Bhutto. So that's the kind of uh, uh, free society this is, and uh, no scholar could uh, convince the population that look, this is not proper. People, you know, rejected. All pleased and uh, elected uh, a female, uh, you know, as Prime Minister of Pakistan. So what I'm saying is that uh, this is an, a challenge, this is an issue. But here in Punjab, mm -hmm. we are fully aware of uh, of this challenge, and we are trying to do everything to empower our female population. Any no. experience from? No, I, I just I will, I will just add that this is still a global challenge, right? I mean, there has been a lot of progress, yes, but still. Um, the uh, dropping out of school is much larger among girls than among, than among boys. Uh, still, we need to make sure that more girls complete se uh, secondary. I mean, we need to invest in, 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 in health education uh, to make sure uh, that they continue having, that they have the right, the right opportunities. True, when they go to tertiary education, I mean, their performance is as, as, as good as or, or even better Right than than the, than the one of of of, uh, of boys, both in terms of access and in terms of their performance in a technical institution or in a university. But again, later, I mean, it's an issue of changing the mindset, right? Many of them stay stay at home and do not engage in the in the labor market. That requires changes in policies. Uh, true, I mean, child care changes in the legislation. But in many countries, there has been progress on paper. One sees the legislation, and maybe the legislation is fine. Right? But what has not changed is what's in the head of people, in the minds of people. That's what has, has to change in order to make sure right, that 
the participation of, 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 of women in the labor market, understanding that they can have any occupation, right, in the same way of, of, as, as men can have, right, is something that's still something that we need to convince societies. So there is still a work to do. As the Chief Minister said, both in the policy side, uh, that's very important, but in terms of I mean, awareness uh, in, in terms of, of, of people understanding of what is the role of women in society and in the economy, something we, we need to keep on pushing. Thank, Thank you very much, much Mr. Chief Minister. Minister. A, A final, final word from your side before, before we conclude? Thank you, Christina, and thank you, uh, Mr. Minister, and thank you, Lango, and your team. <coughs> it's been a <coughs> wonderful opportunity to have uh, exchange of views. Uh, you know, we had a wonderful uh, forum on uh, you know, uh, human development, which I uh, really enjoyed it, and this discussion. I would say that uh, this partnership is, uh, is, is very, very dear to me. It's uh, very valuable. And uh, this partnership uh, between uh, World Bank and uh, Pakistan government of Punjab must uh, grow by leaps and bounds, particularly in the area of uh, promoting education. Uh, you know, at uh, primary level, at middle level, and of course at the higher level. Because uh, uh, if we have to really progress, it's education. If we have to, uh, you know, make this country wealthier, it's knowledge and education. If we have to really excel uh, uh, amongst uh, other neighboring countries, it is, it is through technology and innovation. And it all revolves around education. So I think uh, uh, whatever we spend in education, it is not an expenditure, it is an investment. And uh, th this year alone, uh, I was going to the figures, uh, closely around $4 billion was the total expenditure of education in Punjab, which mm -hmm. is probably the highest figure in Punjab's history. But it's still not enough. Yeah. You know, we have to uh, pump in more resources, and we can. Uh, through our own resources and through, of course, your gracious support. But more important is to use these resources uh, in uh, the best possible fashion to get maximum dividends, to get maximum uh, results and achieve uh, you know, uh, much higher uh, goals than we really uh, are doing at the moment. That's probably the biggest challenge we face and we have discussed all other elements. Uh, my uh, uh, parting note would be, it's uh, uh, about education, education and education. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Thank, you, Thank, you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Minister. A pleasure. Thank, Thank you very you. much. An honor to continue working with you. Thank, Thank you so much. Much.